Hallelujah. All right, let's get into the word of God today. Hallelujah. And this morning, I want to talk to us about how to keep your joy in difficult transitions. How to keep your joy in difficult transitions. How to keep your joy in difficult transitions. Romans chapter 9, verse 16. Romans chapter 9, verse 15. Romans chapter 9, verse 15. I'm going to read from the Passion Translation. Romans chapter 9, verse 15. The Bible says, and he, referring to God, has every right to say to Moses, I will be merciful to whom I choose. Nobody talks like God, sir. He said, he said I will be merciful to whom I choose. Go and call your policeman. Arrest me. He says, I will be merciful to whom I choose and I will show compassion to whomever I wish. Verse 16. And this is the context. Again, this proves that God's choice does not depend on how badly someone wants it. Because, hey, 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 you know, the Yoruba say, tell me that's, you know, Kira kita. Give him a microphone. You have to. That, that's, you know. Praise God. Give him a microphone to help me. Praise. It's nice to see you in church. It's been a while, right? You are welcome today. In Jesus' name. We'll see you next month. Yeah. Yeah, tell me. Kira kita udola. The microphone is not working. It's on. Kira kita udola. Is it working now? Kira kita udola. Yeah. You, you know, it, it, it's my vernacular that says that hard work is important, but hard work does not translate. Running around does not translate into greatness. I hope I've done the good translation. It says, again, this proves that God's choice does not depend on how badly someone wants it or tries to earn it, but it depends on God's kindness and mercy. And the reason I'm saying so to you is that if there's something you want to be grateful for, is that you have obtained mercy. Let me, let me show you one scripture. First Peter chapter 2. First chapter 2, I think is verse 10. The message translation. Is that the message of passion? When you show me, I'll tell you, I'll tell you the translation. First Peter chapter 2, verse 10. Chapter, chapter 2, verse 9. Chapter 2, verse 9. Yeah. First Peter chapter 2, verse 9. Very powerful. Yeah. Mm. The passion translation. The passion. The Passion Translation. Verse 10. Move to verse 10. Just, I just, verse 10. Uh-huh. Let's read from verse 9. I, I can, I, yeah. Oh, verse 10 is okay. Verse 10 is okay. It says, For at one time you were not God's people, but now that you are, but now you are. At one time, you knew nothing of God's mercies. He says, because you hadn't received it yet. He said, but now you are drenched, soaked, covered with God's mercy. God's mercy is powerful. You know, someone say, what is mercy? Mercy is a cover. Pastor Nick, will you come again? Mercy is a cover. You know, this is what mercy looks like. This pastor is wearing this agbada. Can you hear me pull it the other way? Either he has wrist watch, he doesn't have wrist watch. Either he has a gun under him, he doesn't have a gun under him. You can't see it because of mercy. Mercy is so powerful that when mercy covers you, it covers your nakedness. Then all of a sudden, you it just Confess your nakedness. Where in life you should be naked, the mercy of God comes and covers you. The mercy of God is so powerful that your errors, mercy covers it. And people wonder, ah, you know, who are you? What have you done? This and this. And this. Don't they know who you are? And it's strictly the mercy of God. 
And that's why it says, I will show mercy to whom I will show mercy to. And there's nothing anybody can do about it. King James said, the race is not to the swift, the battle is not to the strong. It's God that showeth mercy. Let's see path. I've seen people that when, when someone obtains mercy, even if you are their friend, you'll be like, ah, ah, God showed you mercy. And if there's something you want to be grateful for today, God showed you mercy. Ah, life wanted to take away your covering. They tried, but God covered it. Despite what you have lost, look at how you are. Despite the pain you went through, could you imagine that you will recover? Praise God. I said, praise God. Daniel chapter 4 verse 14. Daniel chapter 4 verse 14. The mercy of God is powerful. The mercy of God is powerful. Daniel chapter 4 verse 14. Daniel chapter 4 verse 14. And let me tell you something. If you don't understand the concept of God's mercy, I don't blame you because you've not realized what it means to have mercy. You know, and, and that's why you always think that, ah, you know, someone says, ah, your children. He said, my children are properly trained. I have a timetable for them. I make them eat well. And, uh, it's because you don't understand mercy. Some people have done more than that and their children went a wire. Some people, since they had a child, they, they opened a medical expense. I met a family. They brought the child for prayers. The mother looked at me, just, just for you to know, this child is three years old. He says, since we've had him up to now, we've spent $200,000. In three years. The Bible says this. Daniel chapter 4. In verse 17. It says this is a matter of the degree of the watchers. Referring to angelic ministry. It says the demand by the word of the Holy One. It said to the intent that the living may know. This was when Nebuchadnezzar was saying that I did, I did, I did, and God took over. He said, to the intent that the living may know that the most high ruleth in the affairs of men. Calm down, sir. Calm down, sir. Uh, the oldest one that you feel as if you know, you know, you know, because I went to Oxford, you know, I schooled in London, I have connections here, I have connections. Here. Hey, calm down. He says that you may know that the Almighty ruleth in the affairs of men. Because sometimes men can be so braggadocious. You will hear, I mean, when I was a younger pastor, sometimes you ask a lady, half of my say, ah, pastor, you know, I'm ready for my drive right now. You know, I, me, I cannot be a problem. Ah, me, me like this, pastor, hot girl like me, I cannot be a problem. I see them after 10 years. I say, ah, my sister, are you not still hot? I say, you even look hotter. You understand that grace to marry is not about hotness. I was sharing in the first service, we had a reunion in my secondary school. And the person we called the most beautiful girl, she came and she wasn't married. And all the ones we said were not beautiful, they came with their children. I sat back. My friend also noticed. I said, wow, the race is not to be swift. Then when it was time to pay the bills, and the bills had spilled over by 1.5 million. Naira. The person that afforded to pay was one of the dollars in our class. All the one that was, yes, sir, I, sir, head boy, head girl, head this, head that, senior prefect, captain. <laughs> Pocket was empty. And I'm saying that because sometimes when you were in university or secondary school, there's a way you would judge the future. And you would think certain people will be ahead. But the thing is that the stones the builders rejected has become the key cornerstone. And that's why you must never give up with yourself because there's a way God knows how to use despise people, look down people. And the reason why he does that is that when God helps you, you can't even say he didn't help you. Because everybody knows God helped you. Because where will you have found money to start the business? Why would you have gotten money to buy a ticket? You will know God helped you. And some of you that have good connection, when they disappoint you, the hand of God is inside. 
And the reason why is that when human beings disappoint you, if they didn't disappoint you, you will keep thinking that, well, it's a payback of what I did for them. It's a relationship we had that did it. So when human beings disappoint you, it breaks your heart. So when God shows up, you'll be like, wow, I never knew God can use that kind of person. The reason why is that I never did that person good, but it was the person that God used for me. That's why Elijah, the Bible says when Elijah was by himself, God used ravens to feed Elijah. What's a ravens? Ravens are birds that don't feed their own children. Why? So that Elijah will not misunderstand it to know that it's the grace of God. That's why he used the widow as Zarephath. It was a last meal. There was no way this widow could let go of a last meal if God did not talk to her. It says that you may know that the Almighty ruleth in the affairs of men. I was like, well, 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 has been the year. The year is okay, Sha. The year is okay. You know, the year is okay. Things are not going so well. You know, that kind of thing. Can I be honest with you? The problem you have is because of your testimony. So I was like, huh? Is it not because you are married that you now know that you don't have a child? It's because God answered the prayer, answered the prayer of marriage. If you were still praying for marriage, would you think of children? Your mates are still praying for marriage. So he said, ah, see school fees. Ah, ah, school fees, school fees, school fees. Is it not because God answered your prayer of child that you know there's something called school fees? Some people are praying that, Father, please, I want to pay school fees. No matter how much it is, let me pay school fees. Let me pay nursery care fees. Let me pay something. You have children now. You are complaining that what is this nonsense? Because you have forgotten that where you are today is a, was a prayer point yesterday. You forgot it. That where you are today was a you, there was a time you were praying about this yesterday, and that, that's the thing about human beings: we are quick to forget. We are quick to forget. We move on so quickly. We we move on so quickly. You meet a single girl, people are like, DMing her, DMing her. You say, Pastor, I'm just tired. All these guys are just disturbing me. Hey, disturbing me. Some ladies are saying, please disturb me. <laughs> because they feed your DM, feed your WhatsApp. You know, when it's Valentine like this, cake everywhere. You'll just be angry. You say, well, what you send me cake? I don't, I, I don't want cake from you. I don't want cake from you. Ah, some people are saying, don't send me cake. Just send me can do. Ah. <laughs> and you actually forget. There was a time in your life if you lost 10,000 naira. Hey, I remember one time I was looking for 1,000 naira. I emptied my wardrobe. Search, I brought out all the choices. I removed it on the right, removed it on the left, removed it, removed it, removed it. I said, ah, ah, she be this one kid was here. Recently, I was going to travel. I saw a jacket at one when I traveled. I opened the jacket. There was $500 inside for my last trip. I say, yeah. I can't forget $500. I don't even know that I've missed money. Lord, I thank you. The reason why is that I remember where I'm coming from. Ah, what I used to eat, buy rice without meat. <laughs> oh my God. My route, there was no shortcut I did not know because if I pass this place after church, if I pass this place, pass that place, the transportation would reduce by 50%. I join it and just move on. And I say, I, I don't know what God has done. Hey, you don't know what God has done. I say, well, I, 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 after I had the heartbreak, she means only your heart that was broken. Some other people lost their sanity, they're in Yaba psychiatric. The reason why is that the reason it didn't get worse was because God was in it. The reason, I'm not saying that God made the bad thing happen, but it could have caused it was ask Job. Job was going for the life. Sorry, Satan was going for the life of Job. God says, don't touch his life. If Satan had his way, he would have taken everybody out. And sometimes we come, we, and we don't even realize that the current problem we have is because of an answered prayer. You say, can, can you imagine the governor, did, the governor did not see me? Is it not because you have access? How many of us have got those number? 
you, you don't, you've forgotten that even the access was because the prayer point at some point. And just in case you forget, where you are in life today, with the problems you have, is someone's prayer point. Some people are praying to have your problems. Just like when you see those who are abroad that says, don't come to London. Don't come to Canada. Don't come. Life here is not easy. Don't come. What do people say? People say, I've heard your advice. They say, me too, I will go. It should not be easy for me. <laughs> and what they are saying is that, listen to me, I know you have your challenges, but the truth is that, ah, where you are, you see my answer prayer points. <laughs> and sometimes you forget. And let me tell you something. When the devil wants to, if you want to be unhappy in life, this is the thing you would do. You would just change your focus from every good thing that's happened to the things that has not happened. There's a very powerful story in the book of John chapter 4. And it, it touched me in a lot of ways. John chapter 4, chapter 5, the pool of Bethesda. The Bible says at the pool of Bethesda, there were a lot of sick people. You remember the story? But there was one man that was there that was sick for 30 and 8 years. And just Christ told him to get up and take his bed and healed him. And this is a very powerful thing. Remember what the Bible says that there were thousands that were sick. Yes or no? Talk to me. Yes or no? Yes. Excellent. So there were thousands that were sick. I just went to him. And the Lord showed me something. And the Lord said, what about others that were not sick? I said, nothing is recorded in the Bible. And God said, learn it. The Holy Spirit focused on what God was doing. Not God was not doing. Yeah. Others were not touched. He didn't focus on that. The one that was healed, that was our focus. He didn't give us the details of the 24 people that were lame and 10 that were dumb and the child that was autistic. He didn't focus on that. He focused on the one that was healed. In your life, learn the principle. Focus on what God is doing, not what is undone. Focus on what is doing, not what is undone. Praise God. Focus on what God is doing, not what is undone. Let's, let's take one more scripture. Second Samuel chapter 7. Second Samuel chapter 7. Hmm. Second Samuel chapter 7. Someone was sharing. Well, I was sharing with them. He said, ah, Pastor, I can't even. Things are so tough. In my business, something happened and I lost 30 million. Ah, you lost 30 million. He said, yes. He said, when I lost 30 million, I just had to go do a quick trip to London and come back to come and face the problem. I said, ah, ah, you lost 30 million. You could say travel. You don't understand. People lose 30,000 and the life is over. You see, that you even have that you can lose it, you are blessed. That you have, you, can, you not lost it, you traveled, this, you are talking about it, your hand is in your pocket, you still brought a car, you are still speaking phonetics. Ah! Some people will lose 300,000. Their blood pressure will rise. You will see them in the hospital. Their marriage will not be okay. Their children will not be okay, but you lost. I'm only saying, I'm not saying the loss is from God, but that way you are. Because we forget, we, we really forget, we really forget. You forget that there was a time you were going to Aswani to buy clothes, and you would stand with your full chest checking out Bay. Some of you took your children to Aswani and you say, stay there. You say, stay. And you say, wait, 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 wait. Is it your size? And, and you were there with your children in Aswani. You say, ah, mommy, thank you. Ah, mommy, thank you. And, but now, if it's not LV, Gucci, if it does not have C's, you don't wear. And you now look back and you say, I'm depressed. Things are not working. Ah. The truth is that you can have mercy, but don't get used to having mercy that you come familiar with it. That you don't even know what it means that God has helped me. And the reason why is that the chair you are sitting on is God that gave you. Don't spoil it. You get used as a grandmother to your children having wedding, having grandchildren. You get used to it. Grandchildren, grabbing one. I know grandmothers that cannot eat. It's prayer for their children to have their own children. Fasting. 
pray, but you you get used to it. Every year, oh go. Every year, oh go. You they know you. My grandpa here, grandma here, they know you. And it doesn't occur to you that this, and it doesn't occur to you that this is in of Lord. And you leave everything that God has done for you, and you begin to focus on what is not done. Someone says, the 10 leper, I have my own philosophy. I think the reason why only one leper came back was that, you know, leprosy is a disease that when you have it, you lose your body parts. So when they got healed, God, thank you, but my hands are gone. My wife is gone. My legs are gone. Thank you, Sha. Because I'm healed, but things have gone bad. And that's the reason why people are not thankful. Because they feel like, but things have gone bad. But I'm saying that it's God that has not gone worse. They've increased school fees. Spaghetti increase. Indomie increase. Yet you are not hungry. If they had told you that one time in your own life, rice will be 80,000 naira per bag, would you have thought about it? But yet, it seems as if as the rice increase, something also increases in your pockets. One of the first times I traveled abroad and I bought a ticket myself. I remember buying a ticket myself. The ticket was maybe about 90 something thousand there. Now I'm buying a ticket to go to Canada. Jesus. I said, what? But I'm able to buy. I'm grateful. Stop looking at the increase and the pain. Look at how God has raised you and increased you. If you look at that, you'll get depressed. If you look at this, you'll be full of joy. Someone say hallelujah. Second Samuel chapter 7, verse 18. Second Samuel chapter 7, verse 18. See, 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 this is very powerful. This is David speaking. And, and the Bible says, then went King David in and sat before the Lord. <laughs> it says, King David went in and sat before the Lord. And let me tell you something. If nobody sits with you, sit with yourself. Sit with yourself. He said, I will sit before the Lord. And he, asked, he began to ask himself a question. He says, who am I, Lord God? Ah, what is my father's house that you have brought me either to? He says, Tani me gone. Ah. Who am I? What is my father's house? And the thing is, the reason why this is powerful, one of the reasons why we're not grateful is that most of us feel entitled. And let me tell you something. No matter how much you pray, no matter how much you fast, what you still have is function of God's mercy. Because if God repays you, we are not worth it. So I say, ah, Man, I'm a very faithful Christian. No. Uh -huh. What about the lies you lie? What about bribing? Oh, you know, bribing is a sin. Exaggeration is a sin. If God starts counting, say, who can stand? No one can stand. See what it says. And, and David, and this, this is the difference between Saul and David. That, that's why David's kingdom was perpetuated and Saul's kingdom was aborted. And the reason why is that David had that huge sense of gratitude that, hey, you know, I'm, I'm not sure I'm worth this. I'm not sure it's my grace. I'm not sure it's my strength. When you see people break down in thanksgiving, when you see people say, thank you, Jesus, you, you, you may wonder that why are they this way? And the reason why is that they're asking themselves, who am I? Who is my father's house? Even as a pastor, sometimes I get, you know, sometimes I just forget. Maybe I come into the church and we have car park problems and I come under pressure. I'm like, ah, Pastor Bulaji, car park, hey, hey. And I'm like, oh my, this car park. I say, ah, and God will slow down. Okay, let's reduce the car park. Reduce people. I said, mm hmm. The reason why we have the problem is that an answer prayer came. Because there are churches with car park and without saying it negatively, that have nobody in the church, nobody in the car park. How can I be complaining? It's gotten worse. The reason why not got worse than that, it's God. 
But you need to just remember, you need to just remind yourself. In, in, in the book of Psalm, the problem with Israel was that Psalm 78, it said, and Israel forgot. Most of us just end up forgetting. And you know, if you were like me, there would have been a point in your life you would have said, God, if you do this for me, I will save you forever. You have forgotten. As simple as jam, you promised. As simple as graduation, you promised. As simple as marriage, you promised. As simple as NYC, you promised. You've forgotten everything. It's the one the Lord has not done that you're focused on. And now you're threatening him. God, you're threatening him. Lord, with everything. And God is saying that, ah, well, you've been promising me all your life. But now you're forgotten. Praise God. I said, praise God. Let's read it again. Then when David in and sat before the Lord and he said, Who am I, O Lord? And what is my father's house that you have brought? I want to notice David. He says that you have brought me. It's not that I didn't work hard. Hmm. Some of you that married, the truth is that when they ask you, how did you marry Allah? You say, you say, not that I was intelligent too. It was God. Because even me myself, I didn't know I chose this kind of man. Even myself, I didn't, because I was very stupid and young. I didn't even know I chose this kind of woman. God just arranged someone that would take care of me. Other people are doing business plan. Um, what they call it? They will get consultant, get strategies, get this, get that. You, you just went somewhere. You saw something, started from, the back, from your car. Next thing, you open small shop. Next thing, 200 million. Next thing, 300 million. Next thing, 500 million. Next thing, 2 billion. And you, you think it's coincidences and it's God just arranging it. But instead of you to focus on what God is doing, you know what they focus on? Ah, I'm not yet married. Ah, I don't have. And God is doing so much for you. So much for your children. So much for your business. So much for your health. And you don't focus on what God is doing. And you focus on what God is not doing. And let me say this to you. If you want to be depressed, just focus on what is undone. I will close with this. In life, good and evil are always happening. What you focus on becomes your atmosphere. If you look for something to be thankful for, you will find it. If you look for something to be unthankful for, you will find it. The question is, what are you looking for? Someone said, hey, well, I lost my mom. Ah, be grateful your mom did not lose you. That would have been a double disaster. Because children should not be buried by their parents. I'm not saying it's not painful you lost your mom. But what have I been at the other way? Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. And, and the reason why a lot of people, and, and let me say this quickly here. Just be careful of comparison. And the easy, to, the easy way to destroy something big in your life is to compare it. And some of you, the only reason why you feel as if nothing big is happening in your life is because you began to compare yourself with somebody else. You had no problem, and this is the truth, you had no problem, but all of you were single. As soon as she got married, you became sad. And the reason why you were just comparing, ah, but I'm older than ah, you know, why is my younger sister getting married before me? Listen to me, God does not do group approach to people, it's one-on-one. -on -one. Heaven is a heaven is a hey heaven is a heaven is a the things you complain about I hope you know that they were once a prayer point e.g. your job You forgot that job you woke up yeah ga, 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 bra, ga, 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 touch their heart break their head touch their heart move holy ghost on that go, elbow them subdue them give them forward now the job what kind of Jesus job is this you forgotten you forgotten you forgotten what, what kind of useless job is this uh, useless but this was what you were praying for uh -uh, not useless You are complaining about the man. Eh? 
my husband doesn't have time. Doesn't have time. Every time, walk, 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 walk. So women are saying that, ah, let my husband not have time, but give me money. Because your husband, she needs work, but he's able to provide. But there are some that are at home 24-7, that have a lot of time, but they're not in the pockets. And their wife is saying, Father, send him out. Send him out. Send him out. Send him out. Let him go out. Let him go out. Let him go out. And I'm saying to you that what you are complaining about is someone else's prayer point. Someone else's testimony. You just need to slow down and be grateful. Let's stand up and pray. Ebenezer, eh. Uh-huh. Heaven is a head. Heaven is a head. My son, I will only you are. Everywhere you are, lift up your two hands towards heaven and go ahead and thank him. Anywhere you are, lift up your two hands towards heaven and go ahead and thank him. Anywhere you are, lift up your hands towards heaven and go ahead and thank him. 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 From the gift of life to gifts to talent, thank him for things like relationships, the family you came from, the parents God gave you, the children God gave you, the grandchildren God gave you. Thank him for health. Thank him for health. Thank him for support system. Thank him for support system. Thank him for support system. Thank him that it didn't get worse. That it didn't get worse. Oh Lord, we give you praise. We give you praise. Ah, ah, Lord, we give you praise. We give you praise. Thank you for not leaving our destiny to men. Lord, we give you praise. 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 Think back and say, see how far you have brought me. See how far you have brought me. See how far you have brought me. Think back. Think back. See how far you have brought me. 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 With all my errors, with all my mistakes, with all my shortcomings. Ah. <laughs> Our marriage almost got destroyed, but you kept also. Ah. Look at my children. Ah. Look at my work. Look at my business. See how far you have brought me. In Jesus' name we pray. Jehovah, you are our cover. Ah. Ah, hey, her oh, Lord. Where do we start from? Where do we start from? Where do we? What exactly? Our heart is full. Ah, our heart is full. And this morning, from a very deep place of reflection. From a very grateful heart. Thank you. Ah, from life to health to family to skills to promotion to marriages to provisions to appointments to growth to progress. Father, we are grateful. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. And Lord, thank you. Even when we can't be ideal, your mercy calls us. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can we shout a big hallelujah? Please have your seats. There's a song. Eshe. Not not Peter Tiber. Emasheo. Esheo. Emma. Do you know it? 